Hi, in this video we're talking about a concept called molar mass, which is a conversion factor that allows us to get between moles and mass. It's kind of appropriately named, you might say. Uh, a molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. And so we're going to have to have a periodic table nearby during this video um, because you're going to make reference to uh, all sorts of elements within the periodic table as we're looking to calculate some of these molar masses. But let's just start with this. I have 12 eggs here on the left side of the screen, and on the right side I have 12 bowling balls. And one thing that's similar about these two is that the amount of the uh, item is the same. There are 12 on the left, and there are 12 on the right. One thing that's very clearly different, besides size, is mass. The weight of 12 bowling balls versus the weight of 12 eggs is very different. And that makes sense because they're different things. Um, this is to say that if we know that a mole is the same amount of particles no matter what we're talking about, it's not true to say that the mass of different particles is the same no matter what we're talking about. For example, the mass of a mole of water particles is not going to be the same as the mass of a mole of sugar particles. And so it really depends on what the substance is, and that's why molar mass requires that you make reference to the periodic table. So what is a molar mass? It is the mass of one mole of a substance, and you measure it in grams per mole. Now, I just want to point something out here. Uh, G slash MOL means the number of grams per one mole. Think about miles per hour if you're measuring speed. If you're traveling at 40 miles per hour, that means you're traveling at a, a distance of you're traveling at a distance of 40 miles per one hour. And so grams per mole is set up the same way. It's the number of grams there are per one mole of the substance that you've just calculated a molar mass for. Now let's do an example. Actually, let's do a couple examples here. I've got LiF. This is lithium fluoride. Um, I know that I have one Li ion in this. I also have one fluoride ion, so one lithium, one fluoride. I can then go to the periodic table and use their atomic masses to look up their mass. 6.941, or 6.94 for lithium, and 19 for fluorine. And so here's how I calculate the molar mass for this substance then. 6.94 plus 19 will give me 25.94 grams per mole. What this means is that one mole of LIF, meaning 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of LIF, has a mass of 25.94 grams. Now, it may not seem like it, but this is kind of huge. This allows us in chemistry to go to a scale and put a certain amount of mass of a substance on the scale and doing a little bit of math, we can figure out how many moles that substance is and therefore how many particles of that substance are contained within that mass of a sample. This is essentially the chemist's way to count particles. It's by using a scale. And so we'll get uh, into how to convert between moles and mass in our next video. But for this, let's first master how we can figure out uh, determining the molar mass from the periodic table. So 25.94 grams. Uh, one thing I also mention is that we don't have to worry too much about significant figures for this. If you round to the nearest hundredths place, which is this place right here, uh, you'll be just fine. And to be honest with you, you know, I don't know if you're using a different periodic table, which is also fine, but if you had something like 25.92 or 25.98, I mean, that's all within a very reasonable range of acceptable answers, and you don't have to worry too much about being exactly on what I have, which I realize for some of you is going to be a little uncomfortable, but you just have to kind of uh, get used to that idea. Let's do another example. What if I had N2? Well, in this case here, I have two nitrogen uh, atoms. I've got an N bonded to another N. This is a covalent bond, by the way. There are two of them. So when I go and find nitrogen, that's 14.01. I just want to add these together, 14.01 plus 14.01, uh, or times 2 is another way to look at that, gives you 28.02 grams per mole. Again, what does that mean? It means that a mole of N2 has a mass of 28 grams. Now here's another example, calcium hydroxide. I wanted to show you one that was a little more tricky. 
Uh, this has one calcium in it, but look at uh, the parentheses with the two. That means that there are two oxygens and two hydrogens. You kind of distribute out that two over the subscripts there. And so if I go to my periodic table, which you should be doing right now, uh, look up calcium, you'll find it's 40.08, or pretty close to it. Oxygen is 16, hydrogen is one. Um, but then you want to add those together and double them. And that's because there are two uh, in this uh, formula for calcium hydroxide. When you're all said and done, you add them up and you get 74.10 grams per mole. Again, if there's something a little bit off about that answer, if yours is 74.08 or 0.12, something like that, you're just fine. Um, people are using different periodic tables and that causes different uh, answers in the end. Okay, so uh, try some of these. These are some uh, challenging ones. Pause the video at this point. By the time the red timer uh, is up, I will show you the answers. Uh, check them to make sure you're doing this right. Okay, so here they are. Uh, CO2 is carbon dioxide. There's a carbon and two oxygens. Um, in the next one, there's Li2Cr2O7. That's two lithiums, two chromiums, and seven oxygen atoms. And oh my gosh, if you did not do this one, do it because this will test your knowledge. Uh, pause it if you didn't do it and actually do it, and then hit play again, and I'll tell you what's going on here. Here we've got three ammonium ions. So that means we have three nitrogens. We basically take this three and we multiply it by the little hidden subscript one. So three times one, that results in three. Here I want to multiply three by four. This is like distributing from algebra. Um, so how many hydrogens are there? There are 12. Uh, don't make the mistake and add these and say there's seven hydrogens. That's not what's going on. Uh, how many phosphorus atoms are there? One. And how many oxygens? Four. So you're going to multiply each of these factors by the molar masses you find on the periodic table. So three nitrogens, 12 hydrogens, a phosphorus, and four oxygens. And that gets you this molar mass, 149.12 grams per mole. Okay, so that's it. That's molar mass. Now, this is only kind of the first part of this. The second part is going to be, well, how do we use molar mass? Because a molar mass just on its own isn't all that helpful. The whole point of a molar mass is to convert between moles and mass. And that's a little preview of our next video. Thank you.